Good morning, folks. Here we are again. Tuesday morning. And uh, my name's Cam Bennett. I'm a pastor at Clontaf, Clontaf Beach Baptist Church. Uh, um, coming to you from the studios at Warner. <laughs> at great expense. Last Tuesday... We looked at a message from Isaiah 55 and verse 7 focused on God's mercy and pardon and how important it is to get right with God in this life while we still have the opportunity to do so. To understand that we need to prepare for eternity now and being a good steward of all God's gifts to us goes a long way to ticking that box. That was, um, was last week. This week we're going to look at the verses 8 and 9 of that same passage. And they, uh, they read like this. Isaiah 55 verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declare the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And in 1 Corinthians 2, Paul says this. And once again, he's quoting from the Old Testament. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things of God has prepared for those who love him. Those are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. Now on Sunday night, part of my message was the story of Ruth the amazing love and devotion she had for her mother-in-law, Naomi. Now contrast this story with the events of the history at the time when that story, it almost seems as if that story was, was an anomaly. It had stumbled into history by mistake because all the events going on around um, this story that emerged as the story of Ruth Ruth were entirely at odds with the, with the uh, sentiment expressed in Ruth. The history in Israel under the judges, one cannot help but be struck with a blatant contrast between good, good and evil. In fact, the story of Ruth can be said to be a story of hesed. Now, uh, my apologies to, to any Hebrew scholars listening I'm sure there's there's hundreds um, but it's a I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it the right way but it's a Hebrew word denoting extraordinary kindness from one situationally more powerful to one situationally vulnerable generally as you can probably guess Hesed, hesed is used in describing God's uncommon love and compassion towards the people of Israel. But in this case, it's used to describe the actions of several of the characters in the story of Ruth. Let's retrace our steps to the beginning of the story. The decision was made uh, by Elimelech to take his family from Bethlehem which incidentally means city of bread, um, during a famine in the city of bread from, from Israel to, to Moab. Now, Moab was a foreign um, um, country and it, it was at odds with, with, uh, with Israel. In fact, there was one of the kings of, uh, of Moab um, reigned over Israel for some years. So it was a dangerous expedition. One wonders why, why? You would have to ask yourself, um, why did they go to Moab? Um, was the drought no, resulting in no bread in the city of bread? Was the drought the result of ceaseless conflict and disobedience or was it because of, of a, um, was the famine I mean, was it the the result of ceaseless conflict and disobedience, or was it a drought? 
was God punishing Israel? You see the theme here. What was in God's mind? What, what were God's plans when this, when this family went from Bethlehem to, to Moab? Anyway, it starts off <laughs> in a pretty dull fashion. They arrive in Moab and Elimelech dies. Okay, not a good start. Was he being punished by God for forsaking his country, for leaving uh, and not trusting in God? Malon and Killian, his two sons, take foreign wives for themselves. Would God approve of such actions? Well, according to the, to the law of Moses and what Joshua and Moses told the people before they, they uh, went into the promised land, the answer to that would be no. Oh, here we go. Ten years later, they both die. <laughs> Childless. Whoops. So we're not getting off to a very good start. Were their deaths God's punishment? Finally, Naomi, uh, whose name means beautiful one, loosely translated. Uh, once again, my Hebrew is not, not terribly, terribly um, in depth. But let's go with beautiful one. Is left alone, not feeling beautiful at all with her two daughters-in-law. And all of this happens in, in the first six verses of the story. Um, is this a tragedy or is this a triumph? Who can know the mind of God? Or put another way, what was God thinking? So the theme of the story, uh, the theme of the, of the message this morning is um, who can know the mind of God? When I was a kid, we used to go to Saturday matinees um, at the pictures. We would call movies back then, they were the pictures. And <laughs> we'd always have a cereal. And in the cereal, invariably, there were goodies who wore black hats. Uh, sorry, goodies who wore white hats and baddies who wore black hats. And at the end of each segment of the serial, there was either a wagon or a stagecoach or, or some form of conveyance that was hurtling along the road, uh, reached the bend of a road, the harness and the, uh, and the uh, connection to the, <laughs> to the horses snapped. The horses uh, took off and the wagon uh, veered off and invariably was going over a cliff. And as as the screen uh, went off and the music, <laughs> oh yes, and that flashback to Tom Mix or, or Hopalong Cassidy, whoever it was, still tied up with his horse waiting outside patiently. And then just as the wagon was about to take off and and, and, and be dashed to pieces at the bottom of the cliff, the, the serial stopped. Come back next week for the exciting, <laughs> for the exciting continuation of, of our serial. Well, now I'm going to, I'm going to uh, bring in the cowboy, bring in the cowboy ending. We're at the end of a, we're at the edge of a cliff. We don't know what's going to happen. Well, actually we do. But, but humour me, because I'm going to come back next week and continue with the saga of Ruth and her daughters-in-law because the men, <laughs> the men have gone. Uh, sorry, Naomi and her... My wife whispered to me. <laughs> Naomi and her daughters-in-law, one of whom was Ruth. OK, so we're poised on the edge of the cliff <laughs> is the cowboy going to get loose and come dashing, dashing to the, uh, dashing to the rescue? Dear oh me, I'm, I'm back in, uh, back in the uh, mists of time. <laughs> okay, folks. Um,
I hope this stimulates your appetite for the for the uh, for the in-depth um, dissertation on the story of Ruth that will unfold over the next um, decade. Uh, well, the next few weeks anyway. <laughs> I'm going to finish now with a word of prayer, and uh, and uh, then we'll. Uh, We'll talk about some other stuff. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're here again, Lord. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a beautiful day outside. And we are very conscious. As much as we, as we don't know how you think, we do know that you are there. And that's the main thing. So that in this time when we're unsure of ourselves, we can be sure that although we don't know the outcome of the, uh, the situation that we're in, we do know that you have the answer. So be with us, Lord. Help us to, to focus on you, to have strength and faith and to have wisdom in how we conduct ourselves. Help us to pray. Help us to to draw near and in all things praise you in all things praise one another be kind to one another and uh, as you have blessed us help us to be a blessing to others we pray in the name of Jesus Amen okay well look that was a little bit of a romp through through biblical history and let's continue that romp next week. Have a great day. Oh, and remember that um, that every morning at half past nine, there's one pastor who's going to come on. That's uh, Bruce tomorrow, PJ on Thursday, Dan on Friday. And then uh, at 9.30 on Sunday morning, I think Andrew's coming back with some more from Revelation. And then there'll be a, a five, uh, five o'clock service on the Sunday night. And uh, tune into the kids' uh, kids' games too that uh, Bruce is organising. It's <laughs> it's quite entertaining. Okay, folks, have a great day. Have a good day. God bless.